it is then necessary to enter each of the disciplines. Economics, law, sociology, political science, historiography, and to transform it from within so that it ceases to be a device of superstition, an instrument of false necessity. Where are we to find the resources for such an intellectual reconstruction, for the ideas that we need in order to imagine the transformation of society in the light of our historical experience. One major inspiration of those ideas would lie in the tradition of classical European social theory. And the most consummate example is the social theory of Karl Marx. Still today, the most admired modern philosopher in much of the world. The central revolutionary insight of classical social theory was that society is made and imagined. Its structures are not like natural phenomena. They are not part of the furniture of the universe. We made them. And as Vico remarked long ago, because we made them, we can understand them. All the structures of society to deepen this idea are a kind of frozen politics. They arise from the temporary interruption or containment of practical and visionary strife over the terms of social life. The more the strife is contained and interrupted, the more they acquire a mendacious semblance of naturalness, necessity, and authority. Our interest is to denaturalize them, and not only to denaturalize them in the imagination, but to redesign them so that they create the conditions for their own revision and so that we can engage in them without surrendering to them. In classical social theory, this revolutionary insight into the constructed character of social life was tainted and compromised by its mixture with the assumptions of historical fatalism. Three such assumptions of false necessity have proved decisive in the history of social thought. The first assumption is that there is in history a closed list of institutional systems, of possible forms of social, economic, and political organization. And we have to choose one of the members of that list, if we can choose at all. The second assumption of false necessity is that each of these systems, for example, feudalism, capitalism, and socialism, in the doctrines of Marx, is indivisible, a single package. All of its parts stand or fall together. And therefore, politics must take one of two forms. Either it must be the reformist management and improvement of one of these systems, or it must be the revolutionary substitution of one for another. And what is the case today in the world? That many of the people who govern countries 
are ex-Marxists who have become disillusioned, institutionally conservative social democrats. They think to themselves, real change would be a revolutionary systemic transformation. It is not possible, and if it were possible, it would be too dangerous. And so what is left for us to do is to humanize, is to sugarcoat, is to improve, is to kill time, is to wait for the next crisis. What they disregard is that the fundamental form of change, the exemplary mode of transformative politics, is revolutionary reform. The piecemeal substitution of elements of the institutional and ideological context of our present routines of political, economic, and cultural conflict. Change can be gradualist and fragmentary in its method and nevertheless radical in its outcome. If it proceeds in a certain direction and creates along the way its own constituency and is informed and inspired by a vision of the direction, by a view of the future. The third assumption of false necessity that tainted the revolutionary insight of classical social theory is the idea that these institutional systems in history are driven forward by irresistible laws of transformation, as if history had a script that we discovered only retrospectively. If history has a script, there can be no program. History provides the program. And our only task is not to work against its pre-established designs. But the truth is that history has no script. We are the ones who write the script, even if we do so unwittingly and against our own interests and ideals. What happened then in the subsequent history of social and historical thought? the contemporary social sciences, positive social science, rejected the necessitarian superstitions, but only in the sense that they also rejected the revolutionary insight, the insight into structural discontinuity and structural alternatives in history the view of the distinction between a deep structure of formative institutions and assumptions and the shaped routine surface of social life. And thus the tendency of these social sciences is to cast over the established arrangements and assumptions a veneer of naturalness, necessity, and authority. To deny our freedom of transformation and once again to cut the link between insight into the actual and imagination of the possible. Not the speculative distant possible, but the possible that counts, the adjacent possible the periphery, the penumbra of alternative possibility that exists around the established world. What then is our task in this world of ideas about society and about history? Our task is to rescue the original revolutionary insight of classical social theory the insight into the made-up character of social life, the understanding that all the structures that are established are a kind of frozen politics, 
to rescue that insight from the taint of the necessitarian assumptions that perverted it. And in this way, to develop another understanding of society, an understanding capable of informing the transformative will through the transformative imagination. The imagination always works by two moves. The first move is to distance itself from the phenomena, to subsume the phenomena under a broader array. And the second move is to grasp what the phenomenon might become in different circumstances or at the provocation of different interventions. But how are we to reconstruct social thought in this way? It is not enough to philosophize. It is necessary to enter the terrain of each of these disciplines, one after the other, and to give combat, to struggle against these superstitions, to reconstruct them until the marriage of imagination and hope is reestablished.